Hello guys and welcome back to the Simply Code programming channel. This is Vikesh and let's get started with today's topic which is about equals and hash code in Java. This is probably one of the most important and interesting concept in Java and extremely extremely popular when it comes to Java interview questions. So let's cover this in detail. To understand why we need equals and hash code and what equals and hash code is all about, let's first understand the object class of Java. Remember, I'm calling it an object class and not just an object. Object is a class as well in Java and it is the super super class of any class you create in Java. So anything you do in Java, any class you create, it will automatically be inherited by the object class. Object class is the super class of any class created in Java. And if you look at this documentation and if you come here, you will see that object class defines this equals method which indicates whether some other object is equal to this one or not. And it also defines a hash code method which returns a hash code value for the object. So let's understand both of them one by one. First of all, let's establish that this, uh, these methods have their concrete implementations available inside the object class. But how do you do that and how, do you, how does it come into effect? Remember when we talked about hash set and I said that hash set will maintain uniqueness automatically. How does it maintain uniqueness automatically? It is because of the equals method implementation which it inherits from the object class. That's how it maintains uniqueness. And if you remember, I also told that you can do, you, you can maintain uniqueness in a hash set if it's a built-in data type like integer or string or float or double, etc. But what if you are trying to create a hash set of student objects? then Java does not know how to perform equality on two student objects because student is a custom object. Java doesn't know how to run equality and that's where equals and hash code comes into picture. So the contract is that whenever you are creating your own custom objects and you have a need to perform equality on those objects, you must override the equals method in your own class. You have to override that. If you do not override that, then two student objects will be compared based on the reference and not based on the actual object values. We will see all of that with the help of an example. Another thing which says that whenever you are overriding equals, you should also override hash code method. Reason is because hash code is also used in certain collections and we will cover that in a while. But let's just focus on equals first. And let me switch back to the Eclipse IDE where I have a student class Again, it's a very familiar class which we have covered in other lectures as well. And I have three different properties here, role number, name and address. I have a constructor and I have setters and getters. Now, if I go here and I create three different objects of the student class, you see I have created three different objects. This student object has a role number one, name John, and the address is the same one. Second object has a role number two and the name John and the address is the same as this one. And third one again has a different role number, but the name and address is the same. It's a hypothetical situation. So let's do one thing. Let's make this role number as one as well. So now these two student objects are exactly identical. So what happens if I compare John with John two by looking at naked eyes, these two objects look exactly the same. So John equals John two should return true. Let's run this program, but we get false. The reason we get false is because the default implementation of equals is being run on the on comparing the student objects because Java still does not know how to equate these two objects. Why you are getting false? Because these two are different references. Java created a new memory location somewhere and put this object, created a reference drawn to it. Then Java created one more new object in this line and created a new reference drawn to. So these two different references are pointing to two different memory locations of the objects. Though their internal values are same, but their memory locations are different. That's why you get this particular value as false because these are pointing to two different memory locations. And that brings me to the hash code contract. You need to override the hash code contract as well, along with the equals to make sure that your equality runs perfectly. Let's go back to the student class and let's fix this problem because we can see that these are identical objects. You don't want to store the same student twice in your database, right? So you need to fix this. So I go back to the student.java and I have commented this equals method and let me uncomment this now. So what I do that I override the equals method 
and the equals method contract looks like this where you supply an object which is an which is a foreign object and now you need to compare this foreign object with your current object of the student class which is this so at first you need to run this particular condition which says are these two objects uh, these two references the this reference and the obj reference pointing to the same object if they are pointing to the same object then this will return true and then we will say that the object is that that equality holds true because both are pointing to the same object so obj equals this if that doesn't hold true if this doesn't hold true then it moves on to line 50 and it runs a condition saying that is obj null or obj dot get class is not equal to this dot get class get class is a method which will tell you the class type here we are checking is the obj class object is of the type student or not if it's of different type let's say vehicle or something then then definitely they will not be equal and we can directly return false so that's why i'm checking that it should not be null or the class types should be matching if these two conditions are if either of these conditions are holding true then i return false and i say that objects are not equal so i've covered this condition where both of the references were pointing to the same object i covered this condition where the class types were not matching or the obj itself was null then all, then uh, we return false if we passed all of these sanity checks then we do the actual comparison before doing the actual comparison i need to do this explicit casting so i cast the obj object into the student type if you remember this is this is how we did this this the casting for other data types as well once you have converted this obj into the student object then you need to define your own business logic based on which you are going to define uniqueness so how are you going to uniquely identify a student in your application will govern this logic in this particular example i'm saying that i am going to identify a unique student based on its roll number so even if two students have exact same matching details but if their roll numbers are different then these are two different objects for me but if two objects have, are having the same roll number and even if they have a different name and address i'm going to say that those two objects are duplicate so roll number is the is the condition on which i'm defining uniqueness equality and duplicity so i define this and say if the roll numbers are equal then the object is equal objects are same basically or duplicate and if the roll, num roll numbers are different then these two are different objects good so far coming back to the main class so now i have the same roll number here let me change the name just for fun and address as well so i have a different name and a different address but the roll number is exactly the same remember we have defined the equality condition based on the roll number and here we are comparing if john is equal to john 2 or not so let's run this program now i get true the reason i get true is because this equals method is is used to run this equals comparison so this establishes how we can use the equals contract to maintain uniqueness now i also said that whenever you have you are defining the equals method you also have to override the hash code method and to understand why do we need hash code as well let's go back to how hash map works remember in the hash map or, or let's say even hash set in the hash set you have to maintain uniqueness now java maintains uniqueness using both equals and hash code hash code is nothing but a memory bucket in the in java's memory where your object is stored it's basically a memory location so every object has a hash code and that hash code is the actual memory footprint where the object is stored and whenever you are dealing with hash set or hash maps you will be required to override both of these methods let's understand how this works so if you have a hash set and you are trying to insert an element then first java will use your equals method uh, definition to check if an object similar to the object being inserted is already present in the hash set or not if it finds an object it will basically flag that this is a duplicate object and it will not insert it let's understand how an object is fetched from hash set let me open a hash set example just to give you some sort of a visual representation of what i'm talking about so if i go to my hash set example in in the collections package somewhere and let's open a hash set demo class yeah so when we were doing these insertions though this is this was a string object so it was the java already knew how to use the equals and hash code of it but if it was a student object and you were doing multiple get, uh, add and then when you were actually fetching the element or you were doing the contains 
then how does it work is basically first it is going to calculate the hash code of the object let's say you are, you are saying hash set dot get b or hash set dot get john one then it is going to calculate the hash code of your john one object hash code is your memory footprint and hash code and the way it is going to calculate the hash code is going to be based on the definition which you have provided so the definition which you have provided this hash code will be run to calculate the memory footprint and then that particular memory java will go to that particular memory footprint and see if there is an object present there or not now java has a memory location right and there can be multiple objects stored at that particular memory location this is possible in java so if there are multiple objects present in that particular memory location which was calculated based on the your hash code implementation then java is going to run the equals method to find the exact matching object so just to try to visualize this if i try to visualize this let's say you have this memory locations and let's say your hash code came up to memory location 2 and then at two memory location, you had multiple objects, obj1, obj2, obj3, etc. This is possible. Multiple objects can point to the same memory location. So if this happens, then Java is going to use the equals contract to compare your John1 object with obj1, with obj2, and with obj3. This is where the equals will come into use. So you see the both hash code and equals are being used here to point to the right memory location. And that's why I said that hash set and hash maps are where equals and hash code will come in full force, where you will be required to implement this. And it's a good practice to always override the equals and hash code in your application whenever you are creating classes. The reason is that you don't know when and where these classes will be stored into a hash set collection or a hash map collection. So it's always a good idea to have equals and hash code being implemented. And when you implement hash code, the rule, the thumb rule is that you should use the same parameters which have been used in the equals contract in the hash code contract as well. The reason for that is what if you used here, let's say you use name here and you use roll number here, then two different properties are being used to find memory location and, uni and the uniqueness. And remember this logic which I just gave you here, both hash code and equals are working together to find the right object. So if you are going, if you make any mistakes in defining the equals and hash code, or if you made any mistake in defining the symmetry between equals and hash code, then you may get unpredictable results. How you define your hash code up to you, but make sure to use the same properties which you have used to define the equality. Always keep this consistent to avoid any unexpected results. You can also do this, just say return one. And every uh, and what happens, what will happen that when you use this particular student class in a hash set, all the objects are going to be stored at a single memory location. And then this particular situation will occur where you will have a single memory location and all of your objects will be present at that memory location. And when you are trying to fetch anything, the hash code will always point to the same memory location and then equals will make sure to find out the right object you are trying to fetch from the hash set. So this is all about equals and hash code, which I wanted to cover in this particular lecture. Do read about this in detail. There are tons of articles available on this particular concept because this is a very important and popular concept, both from implementation perspective and from interview perspective. And that's all we are going to cover in this particular session. In the next session, we are going to talk about another very interesting concept, which is comparable in Java. If you like this video, a thumbs up would be massively appreciated. And please don't forget to subscribe to Simply Code for more programming related videos. Thank you and we'll meet again in the next session.